Have you ever wondered what these little black dots are that are invading our screens and our print material here at Lifehouse Church? Well, I'd like to help you out just a little bit. What this is, is a QR code, and if you scan that with your camera, you can open up a link to whatever we're talking about on that particular page. This is our giving, coming through one of our services. Let me show you how to use it. You pull out your phone, you go to the camera app, open the camera up, and then you take your camera and hover over that code. What happens is a little link to the website pops up right here. You just tap that link, and off it takes you right to the link that connects to that part of the service or that part in the print material. Hope that makes sense. The QR codes are an awesome way to keep connected. We are a church that loves to give. You know, it says in 2 Corinthians that God loves a cheerful giver. You can give by just heading to our website and just click the Give tab. It's so easy. You know, let's continue to be faithful with our giving. You can give online by heading to lifehouse.net.au. Once you're on the homepage, in the menu bar up the top, you'll see the link to give. Click on Give and you'll find everything you need, from direct debit details to the button to give via credit card. Add your amount and where you'd like your giving to go and you're ready to give. Have I got news for you. Are you ready for this? Church, we have our very own app. No more Google searching, no more scrolling in there. In one click, you can give online. In one click, you can watch church online. In one click, you've got all the information about our series coming up. Hey, this is so exciting, church. All you gotta do is jump on our app store, search Lifehouse Church TV, download, and you are good to go. Hello, during our service today, we're gonna to be taking communion together. This is a time where we remember and thank Jesus for the sacrifice that he made for us. You can go and get ready and prepare what you and your family need for this communion moment together. You can get some juice. This represents Jesus' blood that was shed on the cross for us. Get some bread or a cracker. And this represents Jesus' body that was broken for us. Let's be ready and prepared so we can share in this time together. Lifehouse Church, make sure you're following our social, Facebook and Instagram. There are daily posts about encouragements and behind the scenes, all the information you need to know about Lifehouse Church. When you join us, make sure you hashtag we are Lifehouse Church so we can see what you guys have been up to and where you have joined church. Hey, I'm Dougie. And my name's Amy. Are you receiving communication from our church? If not, we would love to update your contact details if you can let us know. Our church is connecting during the week online. We invite you to be a part of that. Why don't you reach out to us through any social media or through our website. We can grab your details and connect you into being a part of that. So click on contact us. We'll see you there.
church today, wherever you are, we're going to lift up the name of Jesus right now. We're going to sing. I encourage you, lift your hands, lift your eyes, lift your heart to Him. He is good. Lucas, He's going to lead us in this great song.
Let's come around a time of communion. So when we were reading the Bible through the um, Get Hungry series, we had a great opportunity to read about the Passover and remember about that, which was a great time to just think about what Jesus was doing with his disciples. Do you remember reading that? Yeah. And one of the things that he says is to do this in remembrance of me. And it just made me think about how when we remember Jesus and him dying on the cross, quite often when we remember, it's sparked by the senses that we have. So so we might smell a perfume and it takes us back to the memory of someone. Like when we smell a perfume that smells like man, it takes us straight back to thinking of man. Or we might think of um, when we taste something, it takes us back to a place that we had a meal that was very similar and it just it doesn't just bring back the memory but it brings back emotion as well do you feel that way yeah. so I just love that when Jesus asks his disciples to come back and to take this these elements to remember him it doesn't just take us back to the memory of what he did but it takes us back to the emotion of that first time that we maybe took communion ourselves or we made that decision ourselves to say, I'm going to choose Jesus. I'm going to choose to follow him and all that he has done for me. So this morning, we're going to take communion together. A bit different to what we've done in the past, but it's really exciting to be able to do that together. And I want to invite you to do the same. 
and so um, we'll just pray um, Lord God I just thank you so much for what you've done for each of us through dying on the cross and that when you um, were with your disciples you encouraged them to take the wine and to eat the bread as a form of not just remembering the actions that you did but a way of resetting for ourselves on a regular basis and remembering all of who you've created us to be through a relationship with you, Lord God. And so we do this in remembrance of you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty. I'm going to take your cup. All right, we'll do this in remembrance of Jesus. going to break the bread as well. Crusty bread. What does it remind you of? Crusty. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jesus. Hey guys, I've been asked to share a bit of a testimony on what God's been doing in my life lately. Um, I never really used to read my Bible a whole lot or pray very often. Um, I always called myself a Christian. I grew up in a Christian home and um, like I believed in God fully all my life but never really knew Him through His Word. Um, you know, I would often go through tough times being upset with God and angry at God saying, you know, why aren't you doing this? But I was never really giving him my all, you know, in, in you know, committing my time, you know, to reading his word, you know, his word's a weapon. Um, and I reached a point in my life about a year ago where, I was, um, you know, the job I was in uh, was a really great job, but not really where I wanted to be career-wise. Um, you know, I started to really get stressed about, you know, my future and if I'm going to be able to support a family and um, yeah that really kind of got down on me and um, started putting a lot of thought um, into you know where I wanted to go as, as far as career I thought you know a trade would be all right um, it seemed pretty hard in my mind for that to happen I had a, a lot of doubt about it thinking you know maybe I'm too old or you know anything like that um, I also thought maybe God didn't need to care about it maybe maybe that was too small for God to worry about you know I can I can still you know follow God in the job I'm at now like why would he need to change where I'm at so I had a lot of doubts about that um, but I ended up talking to Lottie about it and he pretty much just said or he asked me do you read your bible I said no <laughs> do you pray and I said no um, and he's pretty much just said, well, you know, get into it. So I said, right. Um, yeah, got into it. And uh, ever since then, I haven't missed a single day in my Bible. And I'm just about to hit 100 days. That's right, which is the best I've done. So it's good. Um, yeah, and after talking with Lottie, you know, I, I decided, you know, that I would intentionally spend every day um, praying into this situation about my my career and um, you know I just pray God please just you know would you just give me one opportunity or just just one job just open one door um, and I guess I thought I, um, asking for one thing was probably too small for God so it felt like a tap just opened up way too hard and I was, I was a bit fine like within a about a two or three week period I got four job offers <laughs> just that like one was literally from a guy I'd never met, just offered me a job. Um, so it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was really cool in that moment, just just seeing how um, God cared about my knees. My needs. I'm sure he cares about my knees. <laughs> it's the little things. Um, yeah, he delivered. Um, and he, he, get, like, he delivered, you know, answered the prayer, and, and it also gave me a choice in it, like, 
there was option, which is really cool. Um, so I learned that God does care about the big things and the little things. Um, he's just longing for us to seek him about it so he can do his thing in our lives. Um, yeah, so I did just encourage you as well. Um, just dig into the word. Um, pursue God because he really, really does care about the big things and the little things. So good. Thank you, Clayton, for sharing. Hello and welcome to our 5.30 service for you guys here in the room. And hello and welcome to Lifehouse Online as well. A big hello to you guys. Hey, in the room right now, why don't we give a welcome to our online community. We love you guys. And I want to give a big shout out to our Maury campus who are joining online. Hello, Maury. We love you so much and welcome to the service this evening. Hey, we are in week five and our final week of our series on worship titled All. Have you been absolutely loving our series? Loving all. Have you been loving all of all? It's been so good, right? Come on, you guys can be a bit noisier. Yes. So good. Hey, I've personally been loving it as well and getting so much out of it and Tonight we are going to hear uh, week five of all in just a moment. But before we do, I want to just share a thought around our giving. And it comes from what Lottie said last week. I take notes when he preaches because there's so much gold that I want to unpack and I want to spend time with God during the week and say, God, what are you speaking to me through those words? And so I want to encourage you to take notes while the preaching is happening. But I went over my notes from last week and Lottie was talking about how we get 100% strength every day and we can worship God with that 100% of our strength or we can worship other things with that 100%. It's our choice as to what we do with the 100% of the strength that we're given each day. And so Lottie brought out this cracker point that I want to share with you this evening again and he said this, we can't worship with all of our strength and worry with all of our strength. It is impossible to worship and worry. It's impossible to worship and have doubts and fears and all of these things. And the enemy of our soul wants to hold a magnifying glass over areas of our life so that those areas are magnified and God is not. And I was thinking about that in relation to our giving, in relation to our finances. And the most famous sermon that has ever been preached was when Jesus preached a sermon on the mount. And he said basically that exact thing that Lottie was saying last week. Amazing, right? He said this, Matthew 6, 24. How could you worship two gods at the same time? You will have to hate one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't worship the true God while enslaved to the God of money. I want to encourage you today, Lifehouse. I want to encourage you Where are you at with your finances? Is God the God of every area of your life? We've been encouraged for God to be, to worship Him with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our minds and all of our strength. With everything we've been given, all of our resources, all of our intelligence, all of our creativity, all of everything that we've been given to glorify Him. And that includes our finances. What a privilege it is to think of our finances in that way. And so I want to encourage you, where are you at with your finances? Is is God the Lord over those? Are you worshipping Him in every area? I want to encourage you with that thought this evening. I'm going to pray over our giving and then we've got the opportunity to give. So let's pray. God, we thank You that everything that we have comes from You. And so we want to worship You with all of our soul, body, mind, strength, all that we have, including our finances. And so God, in giving to You first, in putting You first in our finances, in giving into Your church and into Your kingdom, we are saying that You, Lord, You are God of every area, including our finances. And we put you first in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. You guys can give online on our app or on our website if you've got cash. And you're in this room, you can give at the box up the back. And if you're joining us online, you can give at the QR code on your screen. Are you ready for the word? As I've said, we're in worship. This week is part worship, our series called All. And this is week five. Are you ready to go? Why don't you grab your note-taking devices and join me in welcoming our senior pastor, Pastor Lottie, as he comes to bring the word. Thanks, love. So, so good. 
Fantastic. All right. Well, I am excited to be bringing our final uh, week or final message in our series titled All, a worship series. A great big welcome to everyone in the room and everyone watching online. We absolutely love this time that we get to share together. Now, if you're coming in for the first time, uh, you're coming into the very back end of a series uh, that has had five weeks together. And uh, in this series, we've taken this word all uh, because Jesus was asked the question about what do I need to, to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responded with a question asked back to the individual who asked it. Little side note, be careful the questions you ask of Jesus because he's going to ask them back to you and it's going to reveal something about you. Just a little hint for uh, your future experience. And so in this moment, the man responds because he knows the Bible. He knows the Word of God. And so he says, you must love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind. Today, week five, we jump onto the very last thing that was said in this passage. And that is, and you must love your neighbor as yourself. In the corresponding verse taken from Mark's gospel, the command is recorded this way. He says, the second is equally important. The second command is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other command is greater than these two. Now, let me just start by bringing this simple revelation that's got incredible significance and consequence to it. And that is this, from heaven's perspective, there is no separation between loving God or worshipping God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and then not outworking that as an expression of love for others. Heaven can't separate those two things. When heaven speaks about worship, it speaks about everything that's going on internally but then it looks for a response externally and we might say, well, that's our singing. That's our clapping. That's what we do in the Sunday service in this time. Heaven says, no, it might include singing, clapping and worshipping with your song but from heaven's perspective, the greatest act of worship comes with a revelation of an expression of love for others. In Galatians, This famous book, Paul finds himself, the author, he's writing a letter. But it feels like he's in an argument. It feels like he's dialoguing with these people who initially had the grace of God as their motivator for faith. But then they come into this thing where they start going, well, we can elevate ourselves by doing some things our own way and becoming, you know, more important to God. And so he gets to the end of this letter and he says, guys, you've missed the point. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6 is one of my favorite and definitely in this letter. And he says, For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or uncircumcised. Now, today, that means nothing for us, but you've got to take it back and remember that that was the thing that separated Israel from all the other nations. This was like their prize. Well, he's basically going, That prize is gone, but there is a new prize. What is important? is faith expressing itself in love. There's no separation between the two. You can't have faith without an expression that is experienced by someone else. So the internal has got a lot of purpose. That's my heart, soul, mind and strength. I want them to be devoted to God. But unless they are expressing themselves externally in my love in love for my fellow man, then the Bible says there is simply no connection between the two. If you want to write down the most simplest statement that you can write down, you write down this. To love God is to love people. John chapter 13, verse 35, Jesus says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. You know what Christians often think? They think what will prove to the world that we're followers of Jesus is our knowledge of God. I, 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 this knowledge that I have and people often tell me that they're not ready to share their faith or express their faith because they don't have enough knowledge. You know what? Heaven never is going to hold you accountable for the knowledge you have of God. What heaven will call, hold you accountable to is the expression of love that you give as a revelation of what Jesus Christ has done for you. Do you know what Jesus Christ has done for you? The deeper you know of what Christ has done for you, the greater the revelation of love you desire to give as an experience for those around you. Do you know when God's people 
particularly the Israelites before Christ came, when God's people lost sight of this, because this is not a new thing, but this was God. This is his expression from day one. But when people lost sight of this, he went at it. He went as hard as he could to bring them back on track. So listen to some of the things that God said to his people that had lost track of the need to express love for others. Isaiah chapter 1, he says, I am sick of your sacrifices, says the Lord. Don't bring me any more burnt offerings. I don't want the fat from your rams or other animals. I don't want to see the blood from your offerings of bulls and rams and goats. Why do you keep parading through my courts with your worthless sacrifices? The incense you bring me is a stench in my nostrils. We've been singing a song here that says, let incense arise. Let incense. And God's basically, he's saying, you can let that incense arise, but it stinks. Not talking about Lifehouse's incense. It's obviously that he loves. Your celebrations of the new moon and the Sabbath day and your special days for fasting, even your most pious meetings are all sinful and false. I want nothing more to do with them. Ouch. Verse 17 tells us why God is so passionate about this space. He says, listen, this is what I want. Why don't you learn to do good? Why don't you seek justice? Why don't you help the oppressed and defend the cause of orphans? Why don't you fight for the rights of widows? God says, the expression of worship towards me without the expression of love towards others simply cancels the first one out. Or the way he says it, it makes it sinful and false. It's great to come to church and be confronted. It's great to come to church and be convicted because what this does is it convinces us of God's actual way for us, not just the way that we might be living today. Can I inspire you with another exciting passage of Scripture taken from Amos chapter 5? Oh, this, you're going to love this. This is reading from the message paraphrase. If you're going to be scolded by God, you may as well be scolded with some good language. This is what it gives you here. I can't stand your religious meetings. Obviously, I go back and say, except for Lifehouse. We're right. I'm fed up with your conferences and conventions. I want nothing to do with your religion projects, your pretentious slogans and goals. I'm sick of your fundraising schemes, your public relations and image making. I've had all I can take of your noisy ego music. Certainly sounds like it was written by an old person. Anyway, I'll keep going. When was the last time you sang to me? Do you know what I want? Interesting. I want justice. I want oceans of it. I want fairness. I want rivers of it. That's what I want. That's all I want. I was blessed to grow up with four siblings and myself and one older brother and three younger sisters. And I'm also blessed today to have each one of them still as a significant part of my life and a great relationship with every single one of them. But it wasn't always like that growing up. If you are blessed to have a sibling or multiple siblings in your life, you probably know that some of the greatest Barneys you ever had in your life came with one of your siblings. Well, I remember a a day where, or actually every day just about, my mum and dad were always, hey, be kind to one another, share with one another, put put each other first. I tell you what, there was very little chance of that happening. One of the most confronting memories of my childhood is the day that me and my siblings made my mum cry. She had all five of us sitting on a bed as she was trying to help us treat each other with more kindness and love and appreciation, but we were not listening. We were each raising our voice, defending our position for the reason why we were sat on the bed in the first place. It was not my fault. It was clearly my sister's fault. 
while she demanded it was one someone else's and on and on we go and we're all raising our voice in this space and then all of a sudden voices start just dropping off in the mix of the five and, and it starts to get a bit quieter and quieter and I, I guess I was one of the last to keep going because I've got a bit of tenacity in there and so I've proven my point that it wasn't me and, and all of a sudden it, it, I stop talking, everyone's silent. I'm like, what's happened? And I look and I realise mum is crying. I'd never seen my mum cry. I couldn't believe it. My mum was in tears. Instantly, I did a mathematical calculation in my mind from the time of day that it was until the time that my father got home. I figured that's how long I've got left to live. Yeah, I just wonder, I just wonder, does God ever look at his kids the same way? I just wonder if God ever looks at the people that are choosing to follow him and how we respond to one another the same way. You know, as a parent of my own children, some of which are in this live room tonight, I get it because I am proper sad in my heart when I see them mistreat each other. I can, I'm glad to say, though, that never happens in my household. I, I actually, my heart feels it. I don't get sad. Uh, it's, it's not an, I'm not a sad, but I feel genuinely sad when I see one of my children mistreat one of the others. But then on the, on the other hand, the stoke that I feel, the joy, the happiness, the exhilaration that I feel when one of my children goes out of their way to do something kind to another one. Oh my goodness, it's like C and I in that moment, we have this telepathic high five. It's like you've just won the gold medal for parenting. Did anyone else see that? Did we capture that? I know we capture everything else that we do wrong, but did anyone see how good we must, they must be fine? You know, I wonder if God responds to his kids the same way. I wonder if his soul just comes alive with excitement and joy when one of his kids goes out of their way to express love to another. Can you just see God up there high-fiving the angels? Did you see that? You know, two things. Two things when Jesus was on the earth moved his heart to action. Two things. One was faith and one was compassion. What moves you? What moves you from wherever you are in your life to step outside of that space to do something for someone, some way with whatever God has given you in order to show his love and his grace to them? Matthew chapter 25 is one of the most powerful. The end of this chapter gives us one of the most powerful pictures of something that from heaven's perspective or from the word's perspective has already taken place. This is prophetic about our future. And I'll read this to you from Matthew chapter 25. This is talking about something that takes place when we stand before God. Verse 31 says, But when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit upon the glorious throne. We'll jump down to verse 34 because he starts talking about he's going to separate people that we, we go, yep, that's going to happen. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father. We want to be on the right side. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. And why are you being welcomed into this space? For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? When did we see you thirsty and give you something to drink? When were you a stranger and we showed you hospitality? When were you ever naked and we gave you clothing? When were you ever sick or in prison and we went and visited you? And the king will say, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, listen to these words, you were doing it unto me. 
the power that's in this revelation is that so often we think that as we as faith-filled people are showing love or showing kindness, we think we're being Jesus. This revelation wants us to flip it around and say, no, when you show your love and kindness, there is, you are being an act of love to Jesus. You are literally worshipping God when you go out of your way to show an expression of love for Him. You know what I love about this passage? It shows us what's valuable to heaven. No question here about the knowledge. No question here about the influence that you had when you were on the earth. No question here about the size of the congregation or about what you amassed. There's no question about it. All they want to know, all this scripture wants to know was, did you feed the hungry? You know what else I love about this passage? The six things that it brings up do not exclude anyone from being able to participate in them. You might think I'd love to help people and if I had all of this wealth, I'd be able to do it. You know what this passage reminds us? That every single one of us can be in this position. Every one of us can give love in this way. Every single one of us. What matters the most? Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. Do you know from heaven's perspective, I'll just drive this home in the last couple of minutes, there is no distinction between worshipping God and serving one's fellow man. They are one and the same. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and the team can join me. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Friends, when we willingly choose to give our lives in service of others, we are willingly choosing to give our lives in service of Jesus. And this is truly the way to worship Him. Let me read you this quote by a man named Oswald Chambers. Obviously, you can see uh, this will be on the, on the screen. And this man lived until 1917. So this is over 100 years ago. He was talking about this. And he says, Our notion of sacrifice is the wringing out of us. Something that we don't want to give up. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Full of pain and agony and distress. But the Bible's idea of sacrifice is that I give as a love gift the very best that I have. You know what God doesn't want to do? He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to lead a body of people that have to love others. He wants to lead a body of people that are so compelled to love others that they just cannot help it. Why? Because in every face, they don't see another human. In every face, they see Jesus. Mother Teresa. She was, this was one of her key scriptures in life. And she said, you know what? I made a conscious choice and that was to eyeball every single person and choose not to see them in the position that they were, but was to see Jesus in them. And when I chose to see Jesus in them, I could serve them in a way without holding anything back. I'm sure if we were honest, if if we found ourselves in a position to actually physically help Jesus, we'd jump in. Well, Jesus wants you to know that every time you do it to the least of these, you are doing it unto Him. Come on. As we take this series, let's not go forward without putting it into action. All my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength, devoted to Christ by loving and serving others. You know, the great thing to be reminded about here is that you and I will never be accountable for what we can't do. So don't look at the world and think there is so much, what, there's so much wrong, there is so much. No, you're never going to be accountable for what you can't do. Just step into the space that you can. With whatever God has given you, find a way to step into the space that He will open for you and give an expression of love to someone else, not because you want them to see you as righteous or holy, but because you see Jesus Christ as you are serving them. 
Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for Your Word. We thank You for the challenge and the encouragement that it brings to each one of us. And we thank You, Lord, for the greatest example that You give us in this space. I thank You that You weren't motivated by a desire to be... uh, you know, exalted and and heralded. You were actually devoted to serving people out of compassion and and out of seeing a a faith-filled heart. You were moved by those things. And Lord, I pray that we would be a people that are moved with compassion and that we are moved to help people as we see a space open up wherever. Lord, let not the expression of our faith be defined by a building or a service or a time frame on the weekend. Let our hearts desire be to serve you as we are serving others. And just as we land this time together, I'm going to hand back to the team and they're going to lead us in a song of worship. And we'd love to have a time at the end where we do that, just to sit on the Word and maybe allow it to come to life in a very personal way for you. We can talk about it broadly, but I believe for each one of us, God has got a personal revelation. So we'll give time for that. But just before we go to that song, For anyone that's joining us online or live in this room today, if you don't know the personal love of Jesus Christ, then the Bible says that going out and just doing random acts of kindness, where that motivation is coming from, that's not the thing that God's actually looking for. He's looking for a transformed heart and mind and soul and strength that comes through the power of what He has done. And from that place, the overflow will be a love and kindness. So I'd love to take this moment to introduce you to Jesus, to remind you of Him as the greatest source of love that we could ever know. I'd love to just simply tell you today that when He came to this earth, He came with the sole purpose of connecting humans, broken humans with hearts that were filled with things that would take us to a place of destruction and connecting us with a perfect loving Father. He did that by receiving on Himself, the Bible says, all of the sin of all of mankind, taking upon Himself every wrong thing that you and I have ever done, every word that we've been spoken that was filled with anger or hate, every everything that we've turned our eye to filled with lust in our heart. And He said, I'll take all the punishment for that because I know when I get to connect you with my Father, you're going to discover a love so great you're not going to be able to contain. Friend, that's what He's done for me personally. And I'd love to introduce Him to you today. So I'm going to say this prayer and some words will be on the screen and If this is you today, then you might like to lean in in our live service as well. Jesus, I thank you so much for what you did for me. I thank you that you took a punishment that was actually reserved for me. And I respond to that today by simply saying thank you. Thank you for doing for me what I could never do for myself, connecting me to God the Father. And now I step into that new relationship with God. And I ask that my heart would now start to turn towards Him instead of turn and turn towards you, God, instead of turning towards the things that I used to turn towards. And I ask that the overflow of that would be a great expression of love for my fellow man today and all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. I'm just going to hand to the team and let's just sit in this moment together as God speaks to us personally. As heaven and earth sing, holy is the name, holy is the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The earth will shake and tremble before Him states who break as heaven, holy Lord, holy is the name. Holy is the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The earth will shake and tremble before Him. Shades will break as heaven. Holy earth, holy is the name. Holy is the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lift up our eyes, see the King. Has come, light of the world reaching out for us. 
There is no other name, there is no other name, Jesus Christ our God. Oh, oh, oh. seated on high, the undefeated one. Mountains bow down as we lift him up. There is no other name, there is no other name, there is no other name, there is no other name. Jesus, we praise you, Jesus. You worthy God. Amen. Hey, church, why don't we thank Pastor Lottie for the word he brought this evening? And while we're doing that, why don't we welcome him back up? We are going to unpack that. Are you ready? Yeah. I've got some questions for you this evening. Are you ready? Always. Let's do this. So, hey team up the back, can you just put uh, Matthew 25 verse 34 to 36 back up on the screen for me, please? You spoke this evening about when Jesus said, um, when have you, there's six things, um, clothed, clothed the naked and, and fed the hungry and given drink to the thirsty. And Can you practically bring that into 2020? Can you just go through some of those and give us some examples of, because we want to do those things and we can go visit those in prison and you touched on that, but practically in 2020 and particularly in this season yeah. of COVID, what does that look like? Yeah, it's, a gr- it's actually a great question, Mel. So I, I actually led, led down this way, but I didn't land there, which I was supposed to in my notes. And so that happens sometimes. So thank you for bringing up that question. See, G- I explained this. I said, Jesus brought up these ones because they included everyone, could participate somewhere. And it still translates in today's world, but not so much in the same way. There is a lot less need for us all to be out there on the front line with, say, feeding people, especially locally. I think, obviously, around our world, that's still something we are so passionate about, but it's not necessarily the driving force. However, there are some things that Jesus spoke about, like uh, clothing the naked and and visiting the sick and those in prison. And, you know, we, we kind of go, does that need to still happen? in its actual form absolutely but you know what you meet people in some form of prison every single day you just do you meet people that are robbed of hope you meet people that are robbed of joy you meet people that cannot see past today you you, you just meet people whose tomorrow they just can't see any value in it and obviously, we live in a world that is surrounded in a society that has got that kind of despair in it in different places. And that is like, think about, you know, taking someone a drink. Think about that. That's the space where that comes to life. When you bring refreshment into that space, when you bring nourishment in that space, there are people that live lonely daily. When you bring a visitation, when you bring yourself into that space without an agenda, this is not saying, oh, you've got to meet people in this space and they have to respond to the gospel. No, they don't. They just, uh, there's, a, there's a beautiful scripture in, in uh, Jeremiah 29 and Phil Strong brought it out earlier and it was like a word that went straight to my soul for this church and that is that we would be people that work for the peace and prosperity of our city. You translate that into individual encounters and you say, that's what we're here to do. How they respond is irrelevant. I'm going to work for their peace and their prosperity. That's how you practically take those things into our society today. So good. Hey, one more question, if that's okay. One Maybe more. two. We'll see how we go. I asked at the four o'clock service this evening, what have you practically done in your world just in the last week practically to love those that you come in contact with? And you gave some great examples. I'm going to reverse that. Okay. And this might get a bit awkward for us, actually. What in the last week or two has have, have your church body that you're a part of, and I know you're the senior pastor, but let's, you know, you're a part of this church body, the Lighthouse. How have you practically, get really practical, been loved in the last week to, hopefully you don't have to go back three weeks, hopefully you can think of some really great examples in the last week. And what does that look like practically? Okay, so here's here's a fantastic thing. So obviously when Jesus spoke that, the methods of communication were pretty limited. The methods of communication today are not limited. They are expansive. So we have the opportunity to reach into each other's world with ease. So I would say I am, uh, if, if I think about 
you know, my week just gone or whatever. There's a couple of different spaces where people locally, not from, uh, sorry, people from this church and then people like from the broader body of Christ have reached out to me with different messages that have just brought great encouragement to my soul. Some prophetically saying, this is what I see God's got for your future or encouragement prophetically and others just saying, thank you for preaching a great word or whatever. Their words, I said, thank you. you know, so, and that's encouraging. And so, is that what you mean? Yeah, absolutely. Did I get that right? Yes, Did I answer the question right? Practically, really, how practically, you, you yes. And UNC, how yes, you practically. That's, practically, really yes. practical. And my ministry assistant, Lauren Kugel, and uh, uh, she bought me a bag of popcorn this week. Oh, and so she, she just dropped Go it girl. at the door and I heard it fall. And so I thought, God, you love me. And Lauren has expressed that today, the love of Jesus I've experienced through popcorn. If you don't know this about Lottie, he loves popcorn. Dougie, it's Dougie's birthday today online. Today. That might not mean anything for you by the time that you join us online. Dougie, do you want to hold up your gift? Come on, Dougie, show us you? what you got. Show us the gift. Show it to the camera. So show the popcorn. Oh. Wow. So Lottie oh, um, texted me earlier to say, it just smells like popcorn. Yes. <laughs> I was actually wasn't texting wasn't Mel because she leads our services and I thought, what a great idea. <laughs> While I'm preaching, people could be eating popcorn. Do you like and, that uh, idea? Yes, would you see, feel the you, love? Yes. If we, would that be a practical way that we could love well, you guys? Well, we've got a big screen. I feel like popcorn's the next thing. So good. And shock tops. So next week you're all bringing popcorn, not for yourselves, so the, but for him. Yes, right? the glory for our of God. We're going to bless you. <laughs> so good. Hey, can I ask just one more question? It's a, it's a quick one, I promise. So we're sitting here online or here in this room tonight and we're like, okay, we, we get how we can practically love our neighbour being who is in our direct world. What if we want to go one step further? What if we, what does Lifehouse have to offer as Great to question. how we can love people? Yeah, fantastic. Well, you know, in all of, all our locations, Northern Beaches, Moree and Coffs Harbour, this has been something that has been in the heart of Lifehouse for so many years. And everywhere we go, we start uh, these care shops. And everywhere we start these care shops, we start these food pantries. And so uh, locally, we've got Lily Rose, which reaches out to uh, young women that have become pregnant and get told your only option is basically to abort this child. No, it's not. They just don't have someone there. Maybe they just don't have someone there giving them love and support. Well, that's what Lily Rose does. We've got Christian surfers represented by uh, Lily and Judah here doing an incredible job locally. We've got YWAM represented by Sam. He's behind one of the cameras. You'll never see him. And, uh, and, and various other ministries in Coffs Harbour that are there for the purpose of bringing peace and prosperity to our city. And you know what? I've got a dream in my heart for so much more that we could do for this community. You know what I reckon I would love to see? I'd love to see a, a, a Lifehouse palliative care yeah. unit. I reckon that would be a special place to bring dignity and love into people that are having their last days on this earth. Not to, not to make them make a decision, but to just express the love of Christ to them and see them as people that carry the face of Jesus. There's so much more. I've talked about chaplaincy in every hotel and sporting team and just wherever people are going to encounter crisis, having someone there who can meet them in that space, show them the love of Christ. I tell you what, I could talk to you in this room about it for decades and I hope to if you stay connected to Lifehouse, I will. And, uh, and I'm believing that we're going to see some of these things take place as we continue to just live this life that he's called us to live. Aren't you guys glad that you're a part of a church that loves people and so practically with so many ways to love people? Yeah, so good. Hey, do you know what? That ends our service. Why don't we give Pastor Lottie a hand? Thank him for unpack that. So good. Hey, I want to say to you online, thank you for joining us and we love you guys. Have a fantastic week and we will see you next week. what these little black dots are that are invading our screens and our print material here at Lifehouse Church. Well, I'd love to help you out just a little bit. What this is, is a QR code. And if you scan that with your camera, you can open up a link to whatever we're talking about on that particular page. This is our giving coming through one of our services. Let me show you how to use it. You pull out your phone, you go to the camera app, 
open the camera up and then you take your camera and hover over that code. What happens is a little link to the website pops up right here. You just tap that link and off it takes you right to the link that connects to that part of the service or that part in the print material. Hope that makes sense. The QR codes are an awesome way to keep connected. We are a church that loves to give. You know, it says in 2 Corinthians that God loves a cheerful giver. You can give by just heading to our website and just click the Give tab. It's so easy. You know, let's continue to be faithful with our giving. You can give online by heading to lifehouse.net.au. Once you're on the homepage, in the menu bar up the top, you'll see the link to give. Click on Give and you'll find everything you need, from direct debit details to the button to give via credit card. Add your amount and where you'd like your giving to go and you're ready to give. Have I got news for you. Are you ready for this? Church, we have our very own app. No more Google searching, no more scrolling in there. In one click, you can give online. In one click, you can watch church online. In one click, you've got all the information about our series coming up. Hey, this is so exciting, church. All you gotta do is jump on our app store, search Lifehouse Church TV, download, and you are good to go. Hello, during our service today, we're gonna to be taking communion together. This is a time where we remember and thank Jesus for the sacrifice that he made for us. You can go and get ready and prepare what you and your family need for this communion moment together. You can get some juice. This represents Jesus' blood that was shed on the cross for us. Get some bread or a cracker. And this represents Jesus' body that was broken for us. Let's be ready and prepared so we can share in this time together. Lifehouse Church, make sure you're following our social, Facebook and Instagram. There are daily posts about encouragements and behind the scenes, all the information you need to know about Lifehouse Church. When you join us, make sure you hashtag we are Lifehouse Church so we can see what you guys have been up to and where you have joined church. Hey, I'm Dougie. And my name's Amy. Are you receiving communication from our church? If not, we would love to update your contact details if you can let us know. Our church is connecting during the week online. We invite you to be a part of that. Why don't you reach out to us through any social media or through our website. We can grab your details and connect you into being a part of that. So click on contact us. We'll see you there.